there really is only one topic that I can raise in my monologue tonight, and it will be, some say, thankfully, short. Well done to the Speedway family last night in Wolverhampton. It was an occasion where the event was bigger than the result, and the crowd was bigger than both. It was heartwarming. So, for once, I can say in a good, uncynical way, only in Speedway. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Um, you was there last oh, night? I was indeed, yes, with um, uh, a very, uh, thankfully, a very large contingent of other people as well. Not just people from Wolverhampton. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Pete, uh, some, uh, there was a few Peterborough fans who made the, the, tri- the trip up from, uh, from over there. Mm-hmm. Um, Bel- in the same some, boat as you? Yep, saw well. some Birmingham fans, saw some Bellevue mm-hmm. fans, even saw some fans from as far as Plymouth. Which wow. is, uh, that's a long way. Yeah. And <laughs> they were, in the Monday yeah, night. And uh, it was a really good atmosphere and they were treated to a very good meeting as mm-hmm. well. Um, 54 see uh, Peterborough for all their problems they put up a quite a spirited fight um, I think if you know unfortunately the big problem they had obviously they had Chris Harris guessing at number one who scored just two points if they'd have had some if they'd have, if they'd have had a good score from number one they might have been pushing for a win mm. in the meeting um, I mean Hans Hansen rode very well he scored 10 and 2 he's, he's not done quite so well at Monmer in the past um, but he certainly performed last night Um and Nick Morris, of course, I mean, obviously Nick Morris knows the track well from anywhere from his spell at Walls. Anyway, he scored 13 points, although I, I think, don't, don't think rode particularly well. Um, 13 points would seem to suggest otherwise. 13 <laughs> points would suggest otherwise, admittedly, but... Um, did he have, a, how many uh, rides did he have? That was out of uh, six rides. Right, that's so that, that, bit, that, that yeah. tells the, the story as well. Yeah, but, but. Uh, it was a good solid performance again from, from Walls. Um, <laughs> Sam Masters obviously had a bad smash in his first one. Thankfully, he got up and walked away, although I, I wonder whether there was any damage done to the bike because he didn't look particularly fast for the rest of the meeting, although right. he, he won his last two races. Um, Steve Worrell, 7-1, and Steve Worrell seems now to have mastered the art of passing people around the outside at Mamba. Okay. Which is good. You know, it was a really good pass in, in heat number um, six on Nick Morris, which is, I believe, the BSBL have put on the um, Speedway GB Twitter account, so get on there and watch that one if you want. Mm-hmm. Um Rory Slyne scoring 10 points, Ryan Douglas 4, Scott Nicholson continuing his superb start of the season, unbeaten in his first four race, three races, uh, Zach Cook 5 and Leon Flint 4-1, and one. and uh, yeah, a good meeting, and as I say, the most important thing really was the size of the crowds, and of course there were members of the Wolverhampton City Council there as well, Right, they've obviously been tweeting about it during the day and really, really enjoyed it, and um, yeah, Stop this, enjoying uh, it and do something about it. Huh? Yeah, well, I think <laughs> I think there's I think there's a lot of, a lot more encouragement now around around the club. I know Chris Van Stratton has been, um, you know, very encouraged by the talks that he's had with with people in okay. in, the, in powers. That's uh, good, which is good. Um, but of course, you know, we won't know more until something a bit more concrete appears. Mm-hmm. Really. I mean, it just shows you though a little bit of publicity. I mean, I'm, I'm reading. Um, John Bird here said uh, there's lots of newbies chat tasting Speedway for the first time. Um, ju- just that little bit of news on Midlands Today and so on Central encourages people. Yeah, Midlands there. Today did a really good piece, didn't they? Yeah. Their, their piece was about four minutes long, wasn't mm. it? So it was a really, you know, and they did it live at, at Monmouth Green as well, albeit so, on the outside of the stadium, not yeah. inside. So, so, well, which, which sort of tells a story, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, which is why they did it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it just shows how that's that little bit of exposure mm-hmm. can improve things and get into people. Yeah, it's just frustrating that there's no meeting at Monmouth next Monday. But, yeah. uh, of course, we've got the uh, the trip up to Bellevue for the second leg of the uh, uh, quarterfinal of the Knockout Cup. So you're defending our 26-point lead against the Bellevue team that has been really flying since Yeah, that, that's that going to be interesting. That that mm. could... that you, That's... Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're going to have to come out the gates flying, but you wouldn't put it past them. I think that's going to be tight. Bellevue suddenly look a very good team. Mm. Um, yeah. I know something I'm a, I'm a fellow I stand with at Monmouth, he went. He was at Bellevue yesterday afternoon mm-hmm. for their meeting with, with Leicester and he was really, really impressed. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Harris guested for Leicester, rode very, very well. I wonder whether maybe that might have contributed to his you know, lacklustre performance last night because you know, it's a mm-hmm. you know, hard track to ride, Bellevue, because he's just flat out, isn't mm-hmm. he? And then obviously doing that and then riding again in the evening. Yeah. And also, it's a totally different sort of track as well. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> that's it. So, but yeah, maybe that might maybe that might have been a contributing factor. As I say, Peterborough, if they'd have had a number one last night, would have been 
seriously close to getting a, to getting a result. So, as I say every week, obviously we will talk about any matches that Wolves have had this week because you're a Wolves supporter and we will talk about any matches that Birmingham have had, but we'll leave that for a little bit <laughs> um, because I'm a Bromley supporter. But we'd, like to, we'd love to hear it. any comments you've got about any matches and meetings that you've been to uh, in your neck of the woods. Uh, keep them coming on the, on the comments. Talking of the comments, we've got a bit of... Um, uh, what can we call this? We've got a bit of a, a, a novel here from John. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's quite long. So you can read that one. Yeah, that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no so uh, we'll uh, we'll go through that. Uh, evening, guys, says John. Uh, great bumper crowd at Wolves last night with loads of news beast tasting Speedway for the first time. But realistically, they're not going to get to have crowds weekly like last night. Also told last night that a piece of land has been inquired about for a new truck deck for a new track down by Junction 2 of M54, which is at the back end of Bushbury, Brinsford, uh, which comes under Wolverhampton, South Staffordshire ca- Council, but the farmer is asking around £6 million. Oh, we all know that this project isn't going to happen overnight or going to be cheap to keep Wolves Speedway running. Yeah, has anybody got £6 Well, I think, I think until there's something concrete in place as to... You know, a spot of land, mm-hmm. um, you know, inquiries made, and there's there's a there's a lot of encouragement given by the council. I think once that's done, then if it can be done fairly quickly, then maybe then there's a, there's some leverage to go back to to Labrooks and say, just give yeah. us another year at Mama so we can get the track ready because mm-hmm. a new with the best will in the world, a brand new track is not going to be up and running for the start of next season. So. Mm. Maybe even I mean I, I know I've I sort of ruled it out a couple of weeks ago, but maybe the only other absolute avenue in that sense would be a, a track share with Perry Bar for a year. Um, yeah, that, that, that I mean for you yeah. that would be a possibility. I have, I would I have my doubts as to whether that would work, but or whether that would be able to happen. Of course, mm-hmm. you know, having two speed meetings there in a week as opposed to one with the planning. Um, it would be diff- it would be difficult, yeah. but yeah. Um, Dylan's buddy Hodgett says evening chat's been looking forward to this all week great turnout at Walls last night plenty of new faces there too some spoke to us it was awesome glad to see Ryan Douglas walk away from Ben Basso trying to kill him that was him. a nasty one that was it really was a, it really was a nasty one <laughs> yeah. over the top, I haven't seen it so, yeah. Yeah. it was a nasty one there I mean yeah. um, Douglas was excluded of course I, I just felt they just, he just got a bit too close and, and clipped, uh, clipped Basso's back wheel Thankfully, as, as Dylan said, he got up and walked away. We have got a meeting on the on the on the go at the moment. Okay. It's down in uh, in Devon, and it's currently Plymouth thirty five, Scunthorpe twenty five. After heat number ten, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Yep. Um, Simon Corbett, I'm going to get you to answer this one. Go on, then. How poor has Sedman been for the Brummies? Disappointing. It was certainly very disappointing on. Um, he looked. He just, he just looked slow, didn't he? Looked underpowered. I think it's slightly unfair. I, th- I think. I think last Wednesday, yes, it definitely was a very poor meeting last Wednesday. But yeah. it, the meeting before wasn't that bad, and he did quite well at Red Car, I think, as well. Mm. Um, I think that's a little bit unfair. Um, Got to do better this week. Got to do better tomorrow, I think. Um, um, and and you could say. I mean, there is there is. You could say that if he had done. His average or thereabouts, we could have won that meeting. You know, at one point we was only two points behind. You just you just always felt that red car would come would come strong later on in the mm. meeting when the big heats didn't those you? And big, I think those, that's, that's going to be the problem. I think Birmingham we're going to have. Mm, well, um, um, we, I don't think it's ideal, of course, that Scunthorpe were there tomorrow, and of course they were there two weeks ago. Mm. No, so it is it is two of the stronger two of the yes, stronger teams yeah. that have come to Perry Bar, and they, they know the season. track, <laughs> and um, <laughs> they're already dialed yeah, into the track. I just it's just a real sh- real shame that that that, that Coventry meeting got rained off because I think that would have been a huge. Mm. Loose to the but the, but I, I mean, Lawrence has said, and I think he's right. There has been some promising signs of some, um, you know. I mean, things like Stefan Nielsen got his first win. Yeah, uh, I think uh, um, James Pearson's done what you at least what you would expect him to him to do. He's yeah. doing his average anyway, which he never did last year. I think the big problem that certainly that Stefan Nielsen had is just the fact that he hasn't had any track time, Definitely is it? Track time. So, yeah. since, not since he's well, yeah. not since he's since he's uh, season ending crash last year. I've got to say, I was very impressed with Zach Cook. Yeah, Zach Cook rode very well. He, he, I, I thought he, yeah. Yeah, he looked really good. Yeah. Um, can you just go uh, the other oh, way again? Uh, yep, there you yeah, go. One, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I just want to say a big, big shout for Elliot Hunt, who's just put on. Elliot works tirelessly at, at uh, Perry Bar. He said, uh, evening all, just got back from Perry Bar, all sheets and tyres are down for tomorrow's meeting. That's brilliant. I mean, all the volunteers that go down there and do yeah. that. Um, just up now, a tornado was taken off. And, and, what they did and, last and I, yeah, <laughs> I will talk about that as well. There was a tornado. Just, there was a tornado. The really? Yeah, I'll tell you about that. Yeah. Can, I, can yeah. I just zip back to uh, the water meeting? Yeah, few, before you do, I just want okay. to uh, comment on, on, on this. I just want to say sorry to all my mates down at Perry Bar for last week. I had to um, sort of hobble out halfway through, couldn't put any tyres and lost pick any tyres or anything up at the end of the meeting because uh, the old sciatica I could hardly walk well uh, when you get to your age it all uh, yeah. it all comes at once I like. have, I have he, was running, he was running down the straight after he <laughs> 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 yeah, so can I okay, just yes, go for it. just nip back to uh, to the Wolves situation because We've got a few comments on, on YouTube which I want to catch up with in case... Well, we because you, yeah, you've remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah that deserves one. a round of applause. <laughs> <actually. Yeah. laughs> okay, shut up. Um, so, uh, David Edwards said, it's not just Wolves, Peterborough are looking for a new track now. The yeah. game's kicked off there. Uh, yes, I was there. It was good meeting and a good crowd. Uh, what do you reckon to Zach Cook? Says David Edwards. I think he's good. I, you're really good start. He's, with him. Yeah, he's, he's not, not scored massive amounts of points, but he's he's... I think he's definitely finding the best way around um, around Mama Green. Of course, it's a track that he's not ridden before. It's, it's not really would have been the sort of track that you would expect would suit him. Did brilliant at, at Perry Bar last week. Yeah, it was, was was probably Birmingham's best rider, wasn't mm. it? Mm. I also, so. uh, I'm a Wolf Speed I fan. I go to every meeting and try to go some away meetings as well. Porky said it last night. Wolves will never die. Well, there's certainly a huge you know mm. um, desire for the. For the club to, to fight and to make sure that it stays alive. Look, the, look as we, we said it before, this isn't just Wolverhampton. This is Speedway. This is this is squeaky bum time for Speedway at the moment. Um, we can't afford to lose any tracks like this. So we've all got to fight for it. We've I all just, we've all got to fight for. We're fighting for the sport want, now. Yeah, I wanted to raise one thing. I've, I've seen a lot of people at Peterborough um, sort of you know questioning why there's been so much support for Wolves and, and not. Much for them. Mm. Um, I haven't seen a petition for Peter to say Peter was speed, right? No. If there is one, tell me and I'll happily yeah, sign it. I'm not sure all three of us yeah, will. Uh, and, and if there isn't one, but make one. You've do got one. You've we got will promote it. You've here. got to start. You've got to, you know, you can't just expect other people to do mm. it. You've got to start, you know, putting putting the effort in yourself, really. Absolutely. Um, uh, we will public publicise it. And there may, it there may very well be one. one. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. Really. So if there is one, put it. Let us know. They're doing a good job of keeping it secret if there is one because I've not seen anything. I'll have a search one. Yeah. Yeah, carry on. Uh, Elliot again, great meeting at Wolves, really busy evening with... And he's disappeared. He's gone. You took him away from me. And he's still not there. And he's still not there. Goodness me. Sorry, it's been that busy. <laughs> what have you done? Uh, ah, there you go. Good to see a large and enthusiastic crowd at Mummo last night. Fair play to the Wolves. They're fighting back in the face of this appalling news. Best wishes for a speedway, speed, speedy, speedy a speedway resolution. I'm going to go with speedway resolution. Right? Yeah. yeah, you actually didn't go all the way back. Pete yeah. Clark says, just got home. Sorry I missed the start. Evening or Where's he peeing? He's been putting the tyres out on the track, is oh, what he's right, been doing. Okay. Oh, that's uh, really yeah. forgiven, uh, Zach Phillips, we can't let Wolves go. We can't let any team go now. So yeah, Peterborough, get your act together. We we need you. Yep. Great track, uh, Lawrence Rogers. Thanks to our superb volunteers again tonight. Sheets and tires all down whilst it's still light. light. Well done, guys. Yeah, well done. Um, and I promise you, Lawrence, I won't be hobbling out tomorrow. Uh, Phil Pulteney, evening. Still awaiting to see Eurosport show Monday night Speedway. Yep. Why? Why? Do you know something? This is this is this should be like. Sky not showing any Premier League matches until yeah. November, yeah. wouldn't it? You know, the season starts in April, and they're not showing any for matches for the first six or seven weeks. Well, BSN of, um, I know BSN are obviously picking up the, picking the up matches the as well. And of course, yeah. Eurosport's free, isn't it? Mm. Has anybody watched the uh, BSN coverage of, uh, I've watched any of the matches? Of I've been impre- I've, I've, I think they started off, you know, a little bit shakily, mm-hmm. but I think I'm, I'm been really impressed with what they've done. Mm-hmm. I haven't I seen know, any this uh, year, but I, I do intend to. I mean, I think the big thing they did back in the winter, of course, was they showed that meeting over in um, America. Mm. Uh, now, obviously, me and my dad watched that one, and it did, albeit it did drag on a little bit, but right. I think it was encouraging that they're doing 
something yeah something like that Absolutely. i mean it was a very small it was about probably about the size of this room the track was but uh so. craig smee's in celebratory mood uh my team bellevue looks strong from top to bottom Mulford scoring is a bit of a concern, but Brady Kurtz went out on his bike after yesterday's meeting, which is a credit to a good skipper, and hopefully he can help him with setups to improve his scoring, especially at home. I've got to, yeah. I've got to say this, Bellevue, for, for all the talk about what a great track it is, I think there is a definite home track advantage now at, at mm. Bellevue, um, and they are going to be very, very tough to beat at um at, I think uh, it's more of a, a setup advantage. You need, you need fast bikes, don't you? Yeah. Um, but they're starting. They're starting to click into gear now, yeah. and I think you know. I, I think Bellevue will finish in the top four. Um, it's whether, of course, they've got the uh, you know the, the strength to uh, overcome probably the, the, the favourites in in Sheffield. I mean, Ipswich haven't been particularly convincing so far. I don't think in their matches, and, and Leicester have been a bit hit and miss as well. So yeah. we've got the silly season starting already. <laughs> um, Jeff Daniels said, uh, so the supposed rumours, are, are they true about Leicester making an approach for Artem Laguta, starting a speedway merry-go-round, Frick going to Peterborough maybe, or Harris, Lawson back to Lynn for KK, all rumours, but you never know. I haven't heard this. I've not heard anything about, I'd, I'd heard about rumours about Laguta maybe going to Peterborough. Mm-hmm. Um, they could do with him. Uh, That'd be a good sign for them. Well, they need a huge boost, mm-hmm. don't they, because I mean, you know, Nicky Pedersen really did um, sort of let them down a little bit, um, you know. To oh, we was oh, we were talking about this last night at, um, during the interval, and you know it was. I mean, Peterborough had options to bring in other riders as well. Of course, you know Chris Holder was one, but they sort of left it late and then then brought Nicky in, and then mm. after half a bend, Nicky decides he can't ride the British tracks. British tracks. Yeah. You know, I think he's I think he's let himself down a little bit there, and he certainly let Peterborough down. It was a real kick mm. in the teeth for them, having you know, made a big investment to bring him over. He was a big fan fair as well. Dave Twine. Hello, Dave. Says, left at the, uh, keep all these upcoming, by the way, she's brilliant. Uh, left at the tapes again. Um, hi, the three guys I took to Perry Bar last week want to go again, plus a couple of guys we met later. Crowd was poor last week, all watching the stream, question mark. I don't think it was that. I don't think it was any worse or better than the week before. I, I thought, I personally thought it was down from the Scunthorpe okay. meeting. Um Scunthorpe meeting. I mean, a lot of. People, I know you said that you weren't convinced that the Scunthorpe crowd was very good, but I, there was a lot of people inside that night. Um, there didn't seem to be quite as many inside, and of course, as I say, that's that's why, as I say, it's probably not a great thing that Scunthorpe are back there again tomorrow. Mm. Um, yeah. In that in that sense. Hopefully, we need we need to. Oh God, we need, we need, we need a win. They need, need a they win. need to pull out a win from need, somewhere. Yeah, you know, once they get that win. first win out of the way, then. Hopefully that will give them a, a bit of a confidence. We'll talk first. about that in a minute. I yeah. just want to, because this will we'll sort of come on to it. So Barry Young, how can Hume bring Doyle down and it's all four back? Then in the next race, three come down and Howarth is excluded. It would have properly made about four points difference. Yeah, I, I have seen that, that incident. Um, mm-hmm. it, it didn't make any sense to me at all. Well, talking about refereeing decisions, that make no sense. Heat 15 last week. Not heat fifteen, heat um, thirteen last week. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Morris and uh, remind me, their number one red cars. Uh, Charles Wright. Charles Wright, thank yep. you. Um, Charles Wright made a definite movement at the start, cocked himself up. He was he came last out of the the, the first bend, and I think we was in one and two at that point. No, saying we'd stopped in that position, but that's where it was. And the referee brought them back. Why do they do this referees? Um, and what happens in the yeah. rerun? Charles Wright makes a fantastic start and he's gone. Because all, all you're saying is you've, you, we're giving you another chance now to, to anticipate and get it right. Mm. Um, you know, my, my argument's always been if a rider moves at the start and they mess it up, tough. They mess it up. Tough. Uh, I, 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 and, and also, by the same token, I've always said if a rider m- messes, uh, tries to anticipate at the start and he does... Good luck to him. Yeah, it's sport. Mm. You're trying to get every advantage that you possibly can. That's the yeah. whole point. If they touch the tapes, yes, they have to be excluded. So they're playing with that. That's that's their choice to play with that. And yeah. might, and and you know, but that's that's it. We shouldn't be calling them back as many times as as we do. If they don't touch the tapes, let it go. But let my, it go. you know. Let it go. And you'll you and, and I'll tell you what will happen if you do that. 
you'll start seeing shenanigans at the types, yeah. and that's quite quite exciting. But I I do miss that from the old days. Mm. I think it got too much, and you look at the <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the famous <laughs> one obviously was the uh, runoff in seventy three yeah. with Sezakiel and Major, wasn't yeah. it? When Sezakiel outraged Major, yeah. so. Um, so yeah, that's what. It just stopped doing that, but th- but that was unfair. Yeah, that was so unfair. We weren't going to win. We'd all, I think, we'd already probably out of it. But well, um, we was about two points behind up here, up until that that heat, I think, and then they got that five one. I think sometimes the, um, the referees need to exercise a little bit of common sense. To that, do you know what the problem to, with common yeah. sense is? Don't you? Yeah, it's okay. not all that common. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Craig Smee says Peterborough should take a leaf out of Wolves' book and get a petition going and get it out there was what we were saying I'm sure they get the same support let's face it Peterborough has been one of the best tracks to have in British Speedway over the years shame it's poor this season Um, it's a big big plot of land as well on the showground I mean is there not mm, any possibility of putting a track elsewhere on that side I don't know I mean We've not heard an awful lot. I mean, it's, it's, I mean you've been there. It's, it's huge. It's huge, the, yeah. The, the showgrounds so. are. Uh, Lawrence Rogers says, Brummies TV had good start last week. Good coverage. Good stuff. I wonder what the percentage would be of the people that watched it on TV rather than go. Quite interesting to find out. We could do a straw poll, but I don't know how, how accurate no, no, it would no, be. No, 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 no. What, what would be int- what would be nice to see would be how how many people actually watch that. Yeah, and, and mm. if there was any geographic yeah. breakdown from it, you know. But I, I think well, it's, at the end of the day, other clubs have made it successful. Yeah. Edinburgh, Edinburgh, um, Scunthorpe do it. I'm guessing as long as money's yeah. going into the coffers, then you know, that's what it's all about. We were talking at clubs going. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, the way, the, way I, the way I look at it is, even if, if you only make hundred pounds, it's a hundred pounds you didn't, didn't have before. before. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Although yeah. I'm guessing there must be a charge to run these streams with with Curtis Sports, surely. I would imagine that? there must be some yeah. sort of charge. Yeah. 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 They, won't, they, won't, they won't be doing it for, not, for nothing. Let's face it. I bet it's more than hundred pounds. Yeah. Well, as long as it doesn't <laughs> cost the club money in the end, that's mm. you know, it's it's yeah. all about yes. getting the name out there. Um we were talking about Eurosport, apparently, according to Steve Morgan and Elliot Hunt, well, they will start their coverage on the 22nd of May and will be on three Mondays out of every four, according to Calvin oh, Tatum. Yep. 39 33 is the score now at Peterborough. Uh, at Peterborough. Uh, Plymouth. Plymouth. Uh, Scunthorpe have just banged in a 5 1 in heat number 12 through uh, Connor Mountain and Ryan Douglas. Ryan Douglas was on a tax sub, so. Three heats to go in that one and Scunthorpe. Right, right before we, we, we catch up with any more. Um, of these comments and there's lots of them co- coming up. Thanks, guys. Keep them coming. And there's probably more on YouTube as well. Um, let's talk about last week's Birmingham match now. Yep. We might as well. Oh. It looked as if we were going to possibly pull it back for a second and we got got it back within two points. Yeah. Um, and they just all fell away, really. And I think Got to, you've got, got to be honest and say, I, I, I've got to be honest, I, I know, okay, so I've got a massive pain down my leg, so I wasn't in the best of moods, but I did come out of that meeting thinking, oh, we've got to make changes, otherwise, we don't, we don't, we don't do, you know, you, we've all been there. Um, I'm feeling the slight, voice. yeah, I'm feeling <laughs> slight. You have, to, you have to think if James Wright had been in there scoring the points that he seemed to be scoring right at the beginning of the season, it would have been better. Mm. Both matches would have been better. Um, n- no disrespect to Zach Cook, who I thought was brilliant, and yep. to, and to Paco, who who certainly was was good. The, the, the Always gives a hundred percent, doesn't he? Absolutely. Um, don't know what was up with with Justin last week. Yeah, uh, he just was not getting out the gate, and I know people say that he can't pass. He certainly can, but I do think that that track last week was. Quite he's been slick. riding. He's been riding all winter in Australia, hasn't he? So mm. um, you know. Is there maybe a case that he's maybe a little bit burnt out? Let's hope not, because that's yeah. it's it's May. Which only good news. Which only good news if it's May. What's he going to be like in October? So. I hope not. Um, so um, I think. Do you think Ty Proctor not being there strengthened uh, Dus? I don't think it did because not really. Tom Thompson didn't really. He didn't really look bothered. I'm sure he was, but yeah. you know you can only go with what with what what you say. Yeah. I think the, um, other, the other, what the other one of the Thompson brothers would have been a better pick, wouldn't they? But, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it would have, should have, could have. Um, 
promising thing, signs. Stefan Nielsen got his first win. I think uh, James Pearson's riding pretty well. Yeah, uh, it's uh, doing at least as good as you, as you would expect from him. Um, I think they kept made a good fight of it, Birmingham. Yeah, but you just always felt that red car had enough to sort of I think, keep them at arm's length a little bit. I think N- Nick um, Morris was um, out force on the first corner a couple of times. Yeah, uh, which is never good to see, but it happens. Mm. Um, so, but just, we, just, we need a win. Yeah, Lawrence, we need a win. we need a win tomorrow. Yeah, put a rocket under them, please. That's my bit. Oh, that's, that's it. Let's not talk about Birmingham again. That, that'll be on the yeah. uh, Scunthorpe dressing room walls tomorrow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but Lawrence put a rocket under us. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Pedersen pulled out of a league meeting in Poland because the track was rough after two rides. Says Simon Corbett. I just wonder whether Nicky's maybe at that stage now where he's not going to take any silly risks. You know, I mean, we are talking about Nicky Pedersen there. <laughs> well, yeah, we are talking about Nicky Pedersen. We're also talking about a 45-year-old Nicky Pedersen who's had some pretty nasty injuries in the last two or three seasons. Mm. He's, I mean, he, he, that, that's really when a ride, when it becomes more dangerous for a rider when they're sort of, you know, ducking out of taking chances. Um, I can, you know, I can remember when when Sean Moran's ill fated decision to, to go back to, to Sheffield in, in ninety four and he got to the stage where he was missing when he's and he's admitted this himself, he was missing the start on purpose because he didn't want to get caught up in any carnage. Right. And when you're doing things like that, it's time to get out. Yeah, I, I think that's because then you become dangerous to other rods if you're not sort of going at full pills. Uh Jeff Daniels says make your own minds up on this. Uh bet three six five have Bellevue favourites eleven to eight to win. The league, Sheffield's second favourite at three to one. I still think Sheffield overall. Still, mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. It wouldn't surprise me if he's so, in yeah, the Sheffield so the final. So. That was going to be my next question. We, we're a little way into the season now. Anybody, any team surprised you? Any team that you think that they've underperformed? Uh, have you changed your mind about anything? Uh, well, Bellevue certainly have, supr- have impressed me mm. since that... Uh, they're not when they've got an absolute tank in it. Um, and we've all and we was all there. saying, um, uh, yeah. So I'm just reading some Lawrence. It, we, we was all saying at the beginning that you know they didn't look as strong this year, Bellevue, and they've sort of certainly possibly proven us wrong so far. Anyway, well, they're top of the league at the moment yeah. with twelve from seven. Then you've got Ipswich six from four, Wolves five from three, Sheffield five from three, Leicester three from three, Kingsland two from three. And Peterborough zero points from five up. I'm sure I, I don't know whether I read this right. Peterborough haven't picked up a point since July last year. Okay. I mean that is what? absolutely <laughs> astonishing. If that's I don't know whether that's true. I've got no reason to think it isn't true. Is but. that true? <laughs> somebody let us know. There'll be somebody out that will know. Talking of Peterborough, um, a certain Mr. Brian Buck said, unfortunately, Peterborough seem to be not putting much of a fight in the face of their new coming eviction from their stadium and seem to have accepted that they have little chance of keeping afloat. None of us want to lose any clubs, but the contrast between the reactions of Wolverhampton and Peterborough seem to have been very marked. I mean, th- yes, and uh, but slightly unfair on Peterborough in this one sense. A lot of the reactions uh, about from about the Wolverhampton situation have come from other clubs as well. Yeah. Or go, I mean, Birmingham did it. Or, Bellevue did we're it. Be, yeah. yeah, we're behind Wolverhampton one hundred percent. All of this sort of rhetoric coming out. I don't remember seeing any of that about Peterborough. Mm. Peterborough so, have had a bit longer to get used to it. Because mm. I mean, it's been sort of rumoured for about four or five years that that Peterborough's you know site was being sort of earmarked as a for development. Uh, so Lawrence Rogers says it was Lawson not right in Heat Heat Eleven. Okay, yeah, on, who moved guys. and got yeah. a second chance? Yeah, so I got I got the wrong rider. Yeah. I got the wrong Heat. But apart from that, it was perfect. And you got a dodgy yeah. leg. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, Anthony Bailey says any news on who is guesting for James Wright at Birmingham tomorrow? What is happening with Proctor? We definitely need to get some points on the board very soon. All seven need to step it up a notch. Botel and Seji in particular. Uh, we. I actually think Botel started to show quite a bit of fight last last mm. week. So I was, yeah, I was a bit, yeah. Um, can can you just put that one back down again for me? Because so, okay. Um, first of all, I want to say to you, Anthony, look at the the, the site. 
the information's there. It's, it's the, the the teams are, are up on the site. Um, but I think it's Paco for James Wright tomorrow, and uh, Proctor is going to be racing with his brand new engine. Hopefully, on it. Yeah. Um, Alfie Botel, I think, um, show for me showed a lot of fight last last week. I think. Yeah. He got, did he get a win? I have a feeling. And, and, he's ice, I think. And, and, and he's he's taken part in our best race of the season, hasn't he? So, yeah, <laughs> with uh, Nick Morris. Yep. Uh, Seji certainly does need to do better than he did last week. Um, but if he'd have scored the same sort of points as he did the week before, yeah. he possibly would have been in the match. Match Birmingham knows. certainly need to get some points on the board before the league campaign starts, don't they? But everybody's allowed uh, a, a bad meeting. Yeah. So let's yeah, have a look yeah. at the uh, let's have a look at the base end series. We'll continue our sort of look at the the teams. Yes. Everyone, who's what's doing what. So at the moment in the Scottish group, you've got Glasgow eight from four, Bellevue five, Berwick five from four, and uh, Edinburgh two from four. So probably not a massive surprise there. Glasgow pretty much through in that one. And in the northern section, Scunthorpe 8, Redcar 4, Birmingham 0. Um, mm. And the southern group, you've got Poole 8, Oxford 2 and Plymouth 2. So pretty much the teams that you expected to be up there are delivering at the moment. Maybe mm. maybe the surprise is, is Redcar not top of uh, the northern section. Still um, time for that yeah. to happen. And of course Berwick. I mean, Berwick have had some good results so far this season, although they were sort of... Brought back to earth with a bit of a bump on on Saturday by a red car at mm-hmm. home. So it's been yeah, it's been some strange results. Yep. And Milton all I mean, they've been probably the the, the standout <coughs> team so far in the in the national development league, haven't they? Some mm-hmm. you know two big wins at uh, at home. Uh, they've got four Bellevue, two Edinburgh, two Leicester, two Oxford, Workington, Kent. And Berwick all get the score, although of course Workington and Oxford not yet ridden in the uh, NDL yet. Craig Smith said uh, Chris Harris anticipated the start yesterday at Bellevue and messed up the start. Ref let it go and then issued a warning after the race. Perfectly reasonable, I think. Referees need to be consistent. Either pull all four starts back no matter what or see how it pans out in the first Seymour. Hello? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's me again. Uh, how it pans out in the first corner before putting red lights on. Yeah, I mean, Lawrence is there. Is there any guidelines for the, uh, you may, know, may or may not know, um, any guidelines that the referees have to follow on that? Or is it just, well, each referee has their own way of doing it? There should, do you know what? I think that there should be um, a rule that says you you don't have a full start until after you don't put the red lights on until after the fir- the second bend anyway, yep. because it actually can be dangerous to put the red lights on before while they're going around the corner if they're if they're close together on that first bend and one guard decides to cut off and the other you know I can mm. see that being so I think they shouldn't whatever. The ins and outs of it, they should never put the red lights on until they've gone round and they're on the back straight. Yeah. Just my toppence worth. Um, Paul Kavner says uh, 1,600 houses yeah, are going on the there, showground. Yeah. That's a lot oh, of houses. Which is a big site, okay. isn't it? So. Mm. That must be huge. If you oh, it's huge. The site there, so. 1,600. I'm going to try and get over there before the end of the season. Lawrence well, so. has answered my question about uh, who was watching the stream. He says most watching were from all over the country and Australia. Very few locally. Very few. There's a few Aussies in the teams. So yeah. And the stream is eleven pound ninety nine. That's not a bad price, is it? No, it's not. Mm. Uh, Jeff says. Jeff Daniel says. Sedgman was poor for Leicester at Bellevue on Monday. Also. Leicester have been a bit hit and miss so far. Mm. I think they've had some good results, but they've had some disappointing ones. Well, they do have. They do rely a bit, I think, on home track advantage. A little bit. Um, Although I, I do think from what. I haven't seen the last track for a while, but what I've been hearing is that it has improved, and every year they seem to improve it. So you can't, yep. you can't really say too much about that. Uh, Elliot Walls will be at Sheffield on Thursday, eleventh <laughs> of May, as long as we don't lose by twenty six points at Bellevue on Monday lunchtime. Yeah, that's going to be. Is that on any streaming? I don't that, think it is. Oh, I'd be wrong. I'd love to watch that. 
Right, well, the time is now <laughs> uh, 25 to 9, so obviously we've got our lead okay. table coming up sh- shortly. So. Yeah, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Duncan Pemberton, hi guys, first time here this season, though listened online as Alexa is a Speedway fan. <laughs> yeah, good, good old Alexa. Yeah, you can you can listen to the show on Alexa now. Um, oh, I like it. I never, I, I never, I don't. She oh, never, she never oh, listens Google to Google lady as well. She's nice. Okay. Are, are, do you, are you okay? No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading some Speedway facts. Can I give you one? Yes. And I want you to tell, well, okay, I want you to give me the answer first. How far do you think Speedway bike will go miles on one gallon of fuel? Miles. What's the maximum you think it will go? Probably a mile. I would say probably about a mile there, maybe more. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that open then because you're both wrong. Leave okay. it open for me. There you go. Right. Any clues on which way around? No. Nope. And Lauren said it's down to each referee. Then it shouldn't be. There should be guidelines on that. That that, that it should. That it should. You can't have one referee refereeing one way and another refereeing mm. another way. Could you imagine in football if they did that? You know, oh, Christ, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you couldn't. Yeah, yeah. That's not offside because he was, he was, he was dead level. And then the other one says, "Well, he was dead level, so that's offside." I mean, you know, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. what they do in the VAR room. Anyway. They do yeah. that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, they got to get a big coin out and toss it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to chuck this out. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Pete Clark says, "Get well, and Nadia Compton." Oh, that's okay. Yeah. And um, there's a. I can't remember. Your, your your dad was telling me there's a he'll pro, he'll put it up. I'm sure. Um, there's a get well soon to go out to one, to a, a really really special Birmingham Speedway fan. Do you want to put it up for me, um, Brian? Because I totally forgot about that. I forgot who it was. Um, okay. Shall we have a look at the league then? Yeah. We haven't. No, we can't. We've All got right. to do something else first because we've totally. We'll make a start on the GP. Yep. We haven't spoke about the GP yet, um, and so we'll make a little start on that, then, then do, do that and finish with the GPs. Yep. Oh, okay. All votes say aye. Okay. Just shoot okay. it. Just shoot it. <laughs> okay. um, so, not a great GP. No, it was sport wasn't it really by the, by the weather. The weather um, they managed yeah. to get it on, obviously, in the end, and they managed to get through it fairly quickly, but, uh, you it know, was, Bart Smiles, it really wasn't at his best, but, you know, managed to... Pull it out the fire when you needed to, didn't they? So, um, yeah. encouraging signs, I think, for the three Brits. Wasn't think, it? Um, yeah, Robert Lambert started off very, very well. I thought Ty looked pretty good. Um, just that one mistake in the semi-final yeah. that let uh, Freddie through for... And Drew Kemp place. was on the pace. Drew Kemp, you mean... Yeah. Uh, you mean Dan Beerley? Ja- and Dan, Dan Beerley, who changed his I name must have, to Drew I must have been Kemp asleep last week. If, uh, Drew Kemp's <laughs> riding in the Grand Prix. So. Uh, I'll, get, I'll, um, I'll get my coat. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a good... Pro- I mean, at one point... It was a British one, two, three, yeah. Yes, so it was, uh, <laughs> that was nice to say. Yeah. Let's stop the Grand Prix now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and Ty's obviously shown more ambition, shall we say? Yeah, he's had a, I think he's had a you know, hugely uh, intriguing um, winter. Mm. You know, he's been doing a lot of work behind the scenes to get himself ready because, you know, he's... He's had a lot of people that have been writing him off, haven't they? And I think he's sort of, you know, I think he knows he's sort of running out of time if he wants mm. to push for that uh, for that fourth title. But uh, I think uh, they'll read somewhere nineteen finals now for is it nineteen finals now for um, Bart Smart? He's you know he's obviously pulled level with Ty, only one behind Tony Ricards, and now on right. one twenty. So uh, of course, obviously significantly as well. Now currently only three championships behind Ricards and the Major's record, and at twenty eight, you wonder. Is that really going to come under threat? Not just to equal it, but maybe even break it. Do you, do you think there's something to be said for the, the class of opposition was better in Ricards and stuff? I, I would argue yes. I mean, you know, Tony, in fairness, I mean, he had Crumpy, he had Pedersen, mm. he had Hancock, he had Gollub. Um, I mean, the biggest threat to to, Bart, to Barter Smiles, it really is, he's not in the Grand Prix at the moment, of course. That's uh, that's Artem Lagusa. Um, mm. You know, there was a good, uh, I don't know whether anybody saw it, there was a pretty good, Documentary on um, on Eurosport over the weekend, was he before the Grand Prix about Bart or Smiles? No, you know, we sort of you know sort of looked oh, into it there, and uh, Tony Ricardson was actually interviewed in that, and he's you know he I mean he's he says he hopes that Smiles does you know 
I think he was more happy about the prospect of Smiles League equaling, equaling the record than than um, when when he was closing mm. in on the record. And, and obviously, Major was asked a few times, and Major seemed quite dismissive of it, really. In in all honesty, mm-hmm. um, but uh, you know, there's obviously going to be there's obviously going to be comparisons between the two of them. I mean, there was always comparisons between Ricardson and Major when Ricardson was getting close to his record, mm. which I thought was a bit unfair because it's just totally different eras, exactly. totally, t- totally different world championship. Yeah, fairness. exactly. I, I think it's probably more difficult to do, yeah. to to win a world championship on a one off. Uh, you know, because you're if you're if you're form, or you get a bit of bad, just one bad ride. <laughs> there is that yeah. element of luck, really, as well. Yeah. You can sort of have you know one night where it all goes to plan. Right, can you uh, just put the there? You go. So I just want to, want to put this out, and then we need to do the Nigel Pearson Speedway Prediction yeah. League. Um, Fast Freddy never let his head go down after a rubbish first two rides. Grabbed a roster in place. Come he on, well. Fast Fred. He did. He rode mm. well. He, look, he looks fitter as well. I mean, he's mm. had a you know, tough, tough few, couple of years. Obviously, struggling with the um, long carvey, but looks back to back to full health now. And he could be a big surprise packet in this championship. And a segue into our um, yes, uh, uh, yeah, for, first time doing the Nigel Pearson Speedway predictions and other half Ben Clifton isn't very happy that I'm beating him. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall we? Shall we uh, put, put this up and see what what the okay, damage is? Okay, well, so, um, there we go. I'll put it on studio mode, so hopefully so, you'll be able to yeah. see. That would be nice. There we go. Oh god. Uh, yeah, that's you're just you're down there. That's just that's. Oh, so, that's awful. That's an old that's an old table. That is, I think. Is yeah. it? Yep. Are you sure? I think it is. Simon, Cor- Simon Corbett's in, in 10th on that table. He's a bit further down than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. That's how yeah. I do, yeah, so. There must be an... Uh, yeah. Let me just put it... Uh, is that, is that yeah, our that benchmark? One? That's Simon the one. Corbett. I think that's the one you're looking at, yeah. yeah. Yep, yeah. that's the one. There we go. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I can't actually read it, but no, I don't seem to be on it. Bit, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 you're a bit better on that 23rd. one. 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want the other one back? I've still, I've, yeah. <laughs> I've still got... Still got... This, this idiot on top of me, but yeah. Uh, so just just to go just to go through the top ten, uh, I'll, I'll try and read it. Is it somebody grey? Bradley Grey. Bradley Grey, yeah. Yep. Bradley Grey. Daniel Lean. Uh, John Bird. John Bird. Andrew Garner. Ben Clifton. Hey. Gordon Gambrill. Kev Lilly. Uh, Nick Matthews. Duncan Pemberton. Craig Smee. Ooh. And I'm still not the best tipster in my family either. No, so. Brian Buck's just outside <laughs> the top ten uh, in 11th place. And he predicted Graham Warren. Right. <laughs> Let's do. Let's go through this as quick as we can because for those not taking part, it's mm. possibly a little bit like watching the sun, the pools on the Sunday afternoon. All right. Okay. First one is the match that me and you will be at tomorrow, Mr. Harris. Okay. It's, uh, Why do I always get the Birmingham matches? He's Birmingham versus Scunthorpe. Okay. Birmingham versus Scunthorpe. Ever the optimist, I'm going to say Birmingham by eight. Yeah. I'm going to go. Birmingham need to win this, don't they? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go 47-43. I'll go Birmingham, Birmingham by four. There you go. Okay. 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 Next up is Paul against Plymouth, and I think you know I think Plymouth will be certainly hoping they do better at Paul than they did last time they were there. So. Well, could they do worse? Uh, it's up to you, Matt. I've gone Paul by twenty six. Yeah. Uh, I'll go Paul by 12 and that would be a good result for Plymouth <laughs> after yeah. um, I'm going to say Paul by 18 okay. um, next up is the uh, first match in the championship for Oxford and it's against Redcar that'll be an interesting one mm. I'll go Redcar by 4 dun, dun, dun. I'm going to say Oxford by 4 oh, I'm going to say Redcar by 2 so we're all in the same sort of ballpark. Um. Yep. Next up is Kingsland against Ipswich in the Premiership. Uh, well, it doesn't get any better for Kingsland, does it? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say Ipswich by eight. Okay. Yeah. I've gone Ipswich by ten. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm making a concerted effort not to copy Simon Corbett because he's pretty rubbish this season. <laughs> I'm going to go... Uh, Ipswich by six. Okay. Okay. Midland Derby in the Premiership, sort of, I suppose you could say. Leicester against Wolves. 
Yep. It's up to you. Hey. No, Matt. No, Matt. Okay. I would get this one, wouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think Leicester's not a bad track for Wolverhampton. We've done well in there in the past, but this is probably the strongest Leicester team we face. Mm. Um, I'm going to say Leicester by six. And so does Simon Corbett. I'll mm. go Leicester by eight. I was going to say Leicester by six, and I'm going to st- stick with it. Um, come on, Sedgy. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay, second round, second uh, leg of the uh, quarterfinal in the Knockout Cup, Scunthorpe against Birmingham on Friday. Oh, it's up to me, isn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. Uh, I'll go Scunny by eight. I'm going to go Scunny by eight as well, which would make it a draw <laughs> for me. I'll go Scunny by 14. Okay. okay. Next up in the championship, Glasgow against Oxford. Glasgow versus Oxford. Glasgow by twelve. Okay. I've gone the same. Glasgow okay. by twelve. It's a, that's a long journey, isn't it? Uh, mm. I'll go Glasgow by fourteen. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, in the NDL, it's Edinburgh Academy against Kent. That's up to you, Matt. Edinburgh by 10. Edinburgh by 14. Edinburgh by 6. Okie dokie. Next one in the Championship on Saturday, Berwick against Scunthorpe. And up to me, I'll go Scunthorpe by 4. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Berwick by four. Go on, then. I just did. Oh, okay. I'm going to, I've gone Berwick by 12 on that one. Okay. Okay. In the BSN series, also on Saturday night, red car against Birmingham. Oh, dear. Um, red car by 12. Sorry, Lawrence. Oh, dear. Red car by 14, I've gone. I'll go Ridgar by 12. Okay. Back in the NDL, also on Saturday, uh, Berwick against Kent. Up to you, Matt. Berwick by 20. I'll go Berwick by 14. It's a difficult track, isn't it, for yeah, those guys? A bit guys. different to Kent, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, 18 to Berwick. Okay. All right, then on Bank Holiday Monday, the meeting at I'll be at the second leg of the Knockout Cup quarterfinal, Bellevue against Wolves. And it's up to you. I'll go Chris. Wolves for a cheeky one by six. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to say Bellevue by 26. 26? <laughs> <laughs> you going to say that? What are you going to stick with? I'm sticking with it. Oh, crikey. <laughs> Got that one because that just it would just be fun. <laughs> well, for me, it wouldn't. Uh, I'm going to go for Bellevue by 14. And that, put, that would then that put, would put us through, put you through into the semi final of the knockout cup for the first time in goodness knows how many years. Okay, uh, then in the uh, second leg of the semi final, first leg, Peterborough against Ipswich. That's on Monday night. That's up to me. Um, I'll say Peterborough will lose by 14. <laughs> you do, you I've got an Ipswich by 10 on that one. Yeah, that's what... Uh, yeah. I'll go Ipswich by 14. Same as me, you're copying me now. Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. oh, you, you think, you just copy me. Oh, yeah. I'll still you, stay above, you yeah, stay yeah, above yeah, me, yeah, that's yeah, what you... Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> we start as we finished... In the quarterfinal of the Knockout Cup in the Championship, it's Plymouth against Poole. Plymouth versus Poole. Tell me why we're on next week. And it's up to you. Uh, Plymouth obviously beat them, didn't they? They beat them in the uh, at uh, beat Poole at uh, Plymouth last week. I think. Yeah. I think they were. I think Plymouth. I think Poole made a really strong fight back, and Plymouth just held That's them right. off. So yeah. uh, I'll go for Plymouth by four. Plymouth by eight. I need some points back, so I'm going to say a draw. Okay, and that concludes the... uh, 
Nigel Pearson Prediction League. Good oh, luck, yeah. everyone. Okay. Can I do a quick plug for the um, uh, former Birmingham Rider Q&A featuring main guest Tom Bacon along with Shane James. Uh, James Shane, sorry. 12th of May, goal, uh, Goals Perry Bar. £2 for BSSC members, £4 for non-members. And hopefully we'll be there streaming And we'll be it. doing a stream. Hopefully. hopefully. Okay. Yeah. There's one heat to go in the match tonight at Plymouth and it is currently Plymouth 44 Scunthorpe 40. Whoa. Right. And Heat 15 is being rerun. Um, Ryan Doug just clipped the fence going off onto Ben 2. It looked nasty, but he's up and hobbling back to the pits. All four back. Douglas is coming out on Lee Compline's bike for the rerun. Squeaky bum time. Mm. Mm. Well, well, of course, that's, that's the second, uh, second uh, nasty one that he's had in, a, in mm. 24 hours. Obviously, he had a big off at Mamba last night. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, well, um, let's... Wrap up by um, talking about uh, the GPs. I also want to say, I'm sorry about this, a, a big well done to um, everybody at Birmingham for the pace that I got that match through last week. Mm, sure, I, I, I had to check the programme to make sure Frank Gibson wasn't refereeing, yeah. to be fair, because, I mean, <laughs> it was tended to find with these meetings that they were over in half an hour because they just rattled through them, but... Uh, you want a referee that gets through... I'm not, I'm not saying just, you know, run them one after the other, but... Just a good pace in amazing. Good pace, yeah, and and that was, I thought that was really good. I, it was very noticeable actually that that they, they was ready to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we can do that, and if that referee can do that, why can't everyone? Who was the referee on? Uh, Somebody will tell me, won't you, Lawrence? He's not my best. <laughs> well, you, you, you should. You should have all this written down. It's not. It's not my best friend that uh, referee after what he did in Heat Eleven. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. No, but they they did get through. Pretty pretty swiftly, didn't they? And it shows it shows that it can be done. Mm-hmm. It shows it can yeah. be done there. Yeah. I mean, it helps that there was no major yeah. uh, accidents and so on. But uh, we were talking off air about uh, speedway giants regarding nations and so forth. And, and, and I was, I mean, before excuse, we do that, I want, excuse, the, I want the answer to that qu- that question oh, that you you put out there. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody had to go. Uh, the maximum you can go is five miles. You can five. go five miles. Five miles. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Paul Carrington, Lawrence has just put it up for you on the uh, on chat with the referee last week. Oh, okay. Thanks, oh, yeah. Gi- Giants of Speedway regarding nations. Well, I, I, I excuse my ignorance, but have, have Great Britain ever been regarded as a giant in Speedway? Who, Great Britain? Yeah. 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 In the 70s. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just absolutely. Yeah. When we had Ivan Major riding for us. <laughs> It was from uh, New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. was from New Zealand. Like, okay, okay. Although there was that, you know, obviously there was the grand. Was it the Grand Slam in um, 19... Plymouth got a five-one in the final heat. Yeah. And has yeah. there ever been a predominance nation that's been continually? Well, you know, for more than like, for, yeah, for more than years, four or five years. In recent yeah. years, it would have to be Poland, but I would say England. Uh, well, mm, you've, for well a long you've, time. you've got to. You can't say, not say Denmark as well. You can't can not you? say Denmark. Denmark you it was can't just, not it was say just Sweden. Sweden have had a turn as well. I really. think Denmark was probably the most mm. consistent one, wasn't it? Throughout the eighties. I mean, I think yes. every time you went to an international meeting in the eighties, you just knew you were going to be here in the Danish national mm. anthem at the end. And of I it, suppose so. America as well. Mm. Bit of fits and starts, really, mm. for the Yanks, wasn't it? So over a fifty-year period, say f- up from fifty years backwards, now would you say still Poland? At the moment. At the moment, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Although they're, they're showing signs of not bringing through riders quite as fast as that, as they were before. I mean, I know you've they got, they've still got a good ball of riders mm. to choose from. And you have to say Britain have got a good... I mean, we've got three riders in the GP. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We, well, obviously, we'll probably talk about this more towards the World Cup starting, but you know, it's going to be interesting who the picks are going to be for that. Mm. I mean, three of them you would think would pick, pick themselves. themselves yeah. uh, then you're going to be looking at Tom Brennan... I mean, to be fair, if, if even if someone like Chris Harris is, is going well, at do, point, do they have to pick a an under twenty one? Is that still I a don't thing? know whether they do. Um, we we'll have to check that out. Certainly, I think you'd have to pick someone who's got good experience of riding in on the big tracks in Poland. I don't think it's, I don't think it's any good picking any picking anybody who's uh, you know just because Tom, they're doing well on the British Tom track. Bre- Tom Brennan would obviously fit that. Of course, there it. is. A, I think there's a Test match tomorrow, isn't there? As well, over in Poland, it's mm. Poland against Australia. Both teams are going to be. Full strength. You've got the, you've got your Doyles mm. and your Fricks mm-hmm. riding. So I mean, that's another that's a, that's a team we didn't mention. Is Giants Australia? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'd like to think really we could get some. We can maybe get a Test match set up 
before the World Cup starts. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let's have one at Birmingham. Come on, Lawrence. Yeah. Craig Smee says um, Charles Wright has to be getting in on current form. He's mm. going well. Mm. Charles Wright is. Although has he got much experience of racing on? Hasn't, hasn't he rode? Well, hasn't he rode Bellevue though? Didn't he rode? Mm. I mean, that's a big. It's not a Polish track, but it's it's a yeah. Polish type track. Isn't Polish it? type track, yeah. But I, thought, I'd, I'd, yeah. I mean, if he's going, if he's on form at the time, then yeah. But. Ben Clifton says when he was growing up, Denmark followed by USA, Sweden, and England were the biggest nations. Australia just behind, and Poland way back. Yeah. Well, at one time you would have said New Zealand, wouldn't you? But mm. yeah, New Zealand have been way off the. Yeah. I would say probably their last genuine world class rider was probably Mitch Shearer, and that's going back. Yeah. 20, 30 years. Yeah. So. I mean, Carl Lago could have possibly have done it if he hadn't had these mm-hmm. bad injuries. No. If I should have, could have. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. God, good God. Right, so Pardon? it's, yeah, three minutes to. Um, I think all the signs in the GPs are that Barta Schmarslik is still the one to to beat. There's going to be different challenges over mm-hmm. the course of the season, aren't there? But I think he, you know, he, he showed on, on Saturday, you know, he wasn't at his best on Saturday, but he, st- he still dug out the win. He dug it out, didn't that, that yeah. Which absolutely. is all you can ask. Absolutely. Probably his biggest enemy is, is, is himself, you know, complacency and thinking that it's going to be a doddle. And somebody well, comes along and sort of surprises him, but... He doesn't seem the sort of guy that... I don't think so, no, he seems pretty honest, he seems mm-hmm. pretty clued up, sure. about us. Fantastic. Right. Thank you all and sundry for all of your comments. Um, we really, really do appreciate it. Um, any of you at the Birmingham match tomorrow, come and say hi to me if you can. I love it. Yep. Um, don't kick his leg. Whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, not his left one anyway. So. Mitch Shearer was pretty awesome on a jet ski too, and then he's disappeared. Remember, he starred on a kids TV show in the late uh, late eighties. Did he? Yep. Well, okay. Uh, there, yeah. uh, just going back to the, the question I gave you earlier, I think I'll start doing that. A fact. I love it. A fact or fiction? Shall I leave? You, shall I leave one with you? Go on then. One of which one of these was not a genuine rider? <laughs> Burnt person. Beak Rida. Say that again. Beak. Rida, think about it. Okay. Rida, Eid. That's Rider Eid. Yeah, but it's not spelled like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know it, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You know, I, know, I, know. Yeah. I mean, that's before my time, yeah. but I know yeah. that. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Lawrence says, see you tomorrow. Pete says, see you tomorrow. And uh, can you just go hack it down a bit? Because that was a little bit interesting. Uh, Berwick Speedway is set to go live after tying up a partnership with the county's radio station starting this week. An hour long total access will air every Wednesday. It's gone again. It's gone again. From 6 pm <laughs> on Radio Northumberland, airing exclusive interviews and insights into the club. There you go. That's brilliant. Good stuff. That They do some good stuff, to be fair, Berwick. I think a lot of other clubs should be taking off the leaf from some of the things that they do. Right, well, we will see you all next week and maybe see some of you uh, tomorrow. Whatever happens, I think tomorrow's going to be a good match. The first meeting was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, yeah, let's do it. We're just Birmingham just need to get that win, don't they? Yeah, from somewhere. Need, need everybody to be firing, basically. Right, OK, see you all, guys. See you soon. Good Take night. Care. Enjoy good your night. week. Welcome to the Speedway Tavern. Enjoy your stay.